Uh, good afternoon, Corky Kessler, a partner in a law firm, Deutsch Levy and Engel in Chicago. Um, we are proud to be at Vega Luna Beach Club, which is such an amazing place to really be at during, during Cannes. Uh, if you can pan and look at this view, um, it, it's amazing. Um, we are here for what I consider to be th the most important uh, issue to talk about. We talked about distribution. We talked about uh, development. We've talked about international pr production. We, we've talked about gap funding. We talked about funding. But the women issues are of paramount importance today. And, and we've got s some brilliant people here. So I'll start to my left. Naomi, tell us something about you. Thank you for having me here. I'm delighted to be surrounded by all these beautiful women and talented ones, and especially here in Cannes. Uh, I'm a filmmaker, and I started my company um, in 98 here in Cannes. I launched my production company with a very philanthropic idea. There was no internet, and there was no um, globalization, and I just wanted to put the world together. Uh, and unite forces and collaborate with people from around the world creatively and in production. So that's what I did. And I, um, the subsequent years I moved into doing documentaries uh, for supporting women and children mainly doing human rights films, uh, feature length documentaries. I've done pretty much all kinds of productions from service to commercial to music video to feature fiction to documentaries and always trying to support a good cause behind it, always trying to uh, bring the voices of people together so we can actually together make a difference and, and, uh, and touch uh, and talk about the subjects that need to be talked about. So that's my mission in life and, and in my work as a woman filmmaker. I went a, a quick story. So uh, uh, as you know, you and I met at the Toronto Film Festival last September. And we become very good friends. And you were on, very graciously, you came to Sundance, and you were on a women in film panel. And people should know this, and I want to tell the story. There was a young lady that stood up. She was very nervous, very shy. And she said to the panel, I want to direct. And it, it, there was a quiver in her voice. She was even so unsure of herself. But I'm, I don't know how to do it. I don't think I am too young. I, I don't know who to contact. Blah, 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 blah. Naomi said to, to her, do you cook? She said, yes. Do you decide who you're going to invite for dinner? She said, yes. Do you decide what menu you're going to have? Yes. Do you decide what you're going to buy to fill that menu? Yes. Do you decide who's going to sit at what chair at the table? Yes. And, and Naomi from the podium said, you're a director. You, if you can direct that dinner and fulfill all those you're a director, the girl started crying. Naomi got down from the stage, gave her a hug. It was the most unbelievable scene. Uh, that, that, uh, so, so I thank you. Thank you. Well, it, it, you know, it's all about inspiration, and I think fear stops a lot of people. And you, they, women particularly, they feel that they cannot do that. It's a man's world, and I think that we have to think in layman terms. We have to inspire other people, especially young people that want, that are creative and they don't have the courage to do it. Uh, and it's not about age, really. It's about having an idea and believing in yourself, believing that you can do it, stand strong. And, and by uniting voices, as we are doing here, it's a way of starting and moving forward. So that's, that's the mission that... We uh, Kate, uh, tell us about you. Um, my name is Kate Parati, and thank you, Corky, uh, for having me here, and thank you for being here with all of you. Um, I'm a producer and a director. I've been done basically everything behind the camera for the last 20 years. Um, I've done a lot of do-it-yourself things, and I'm working on several co-productions here, selling them here in France, and working on um, two very true stories. Uh, 
almost in line with what Naomi is talking about, bringing, I mean, bringing stories to make the world a better place, uh, giving voice to women especially, and uh, to keep things interesting. So. Um, Kate, um, Kate invited me to uh, go to Provincetown to, to, to be part of Women in Media uh, Conference. And, and 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 there there were people from the from the federal government and from the ACLU. from the ACLU um, who were talking about that they were preparing for a complaint against the studios for systematically discriminating against women in film, and and they talked about where the settlement process was, but I have to tell you. Uh, if you ever ask me to speak to 114 women again, shoot me. Uh, it, it, it really was a very, very difficult l landscape because some of the speakers blasted men. And, and so it was something that was very peculiar to me be, because that's never happened before. Someone wants to help you, you're going to take the help. You don't bite the hand that wants to feed you. Danielle, tell us about you. Uh, my name is Daniela Lavender. I have a my background is I'm from Brazil. Uh, lived in London in England for the past 17 years and um, for the past 10 LA as well. My background is in acting. In 2013, my husband and I and I decided to form a company called Lavender Pictures. Um, we produce we are producing character driven uh, narrative driven films. And uh, because b b both of our backgrounds uh, are in acting, I, someone had to have some kind of background in producing. So what we did, I went to the New York Film Academy and for the past uh, year and I've, I've been learning producing because I think each producer has its own difficulties and you are going to face your own difficulties. Our dif difficulty is our challenge is a skill. We have to produce skill and experience because we have the, the contact or whatever you call it. So, so we can produce and we think the most important thing is content. Definitely the script first and then the rest will come. So I met this beautiful lady uh, at the New York Film Academy and, and I gave a lecture there. Um, and the next thing I know, I had three or four meetings with her before I left California and and the, the fact that she wants to do what you want to do and the responsibility that you have as a producer is to make the, the movie I wish you great success in all that you're doing so so Eileen you are the I don't know if it's good or bad but you are the president of the International Women in Film uh, tell us about you and what you do Hi, I'm Eileen Hoter. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I've worked in the industry for many, many years. I work as a producer and a director. Uh, I did a series on women in the arts in Canada and covered 450 women artists in Canada, not deciding what a woman artist was, but anything from tattoo artist to concert pianist. I am currently on the board of Vancouver Women in Film, and I'm currently the chair of Women in Film International and thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this panel. And next is one of my favorite people in the entire world. Uh, Nancy, tell us something about you. Thank you very much and thank you for having me here today. There is no better environment both outside and inside to have this panel so thank you for allowing me to be on it. My name is Nancy Pitts and I am the president of Tennessee Women in Film and Media. I'm also on the International Board of Women in Film, and it is my pleasure to work with women throughout the state of Tennessee and encourage their development at whatever stage they are. I am a producer and a writer, uh, which I have put most of that on hold. I have two pet projects I'm continuing to work on, but other than that, I believe that uh, everybody needs a foundation. Everybody needs an anchor. Uh, in what you do, you need to have the support of people, even if you're a maverick and you want to be able to do it. You also need people who believe in you and who will support that financially, emotionally, culturally, and gender, in my opinion. So I believe that somewhere along the line, uh, thousands of years ago, 
um, <clears throat> women were encouraged not to support and be uh, supportive of each other and collaborate. So there's really just two sayings that separate uh, many different things from women in film. And one of them is that we strongly support the idea of collaboration over competition. Because in the end, one only competes with themselves, really. One competes with themselves as one tries to improve their station, their job, their stories, their work. And the second one is substance over style. And women who believe in those things, I will support you to the ends of the earth. All right. Well, wow. Okay. So, so I have a question. Uh, and I'll start out with a comment. The, 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 the question is, you got it work on getting a database for international women in film in categories from directing to DPs to producers, writers, because those of us that want to look for those people on our clients' films don't have a ready access to who these people are. So I, I encourage you to continue as the president of International Women in Film to, to try and help all of us. Uh, uh, in that field, because studios are not making movie, uh, not funding movies anymore. There are, there are thousands and thousands of independent filmmakers that, and a good amount of them are men, and they would like to look to women to fulfill parts, but they don't have access to, to where to go. So, well, that's one of the things we are looking at right now. There used to be a database. Uh, Twelve years ago, in those days, it was very expensive to keep up just with technology, but technology has changed very rapidly in the last little while. And so we are looking at having that exact thing, some kind of a database where all the chapter members who opt in, they can opt in and have their information. Um, as I say, it's one of the things we were discussing when we were just in London at the CEC, the chapter executive conference. And w with your thought of doing it, is there a time frame? Uh, we just, it was brought up at our last meeting, um, so it'll probably be brought up at our, our next meeting next month and uh, decided on, because we have to find out what the cost is going to be because it's, it's a costly thing in the sense to, to upkeep and to maintain because people step down and step up, so, but it is definitely th something we are looking at right now. You're going you're gonna to have a lot of women that are in the business that are going to want to help you in, in the cost Kate? Oh, I just can add to that that one of the people who was at the Women's Media Summit is Kate Kaminsky, and she already does have a website um, where she lists uh, producers, directors, and DPs. And it's an on she maintains it. She's been doing a great job, so I'm sure she'd be willing to share that with you because it's a, you're on it. It's a worldwide list that uh, she's been doing for years. Uh, and, and that's what Women in Film International is doing, is mm -hmm. it's linking, we have, there are 47 chapters around the world that are part of WIFTI, and they all have websites, but by going to the one website, WIFTI International, you can find all of their websites. So if you're planning to shoot in, in somewhere in the States, or in Canada, Tennessee, uh, you know, Australia, New Zealand, they already have that first connection there. And because, you know, everybody is part of the same organization, um, if if they, you may not find the right person, you can get in touch with Australia's chapter, and they will give you specifically the DPs that they have available, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But but there's not a ready access to, to the it. United States. I mean, we don't have a database that I can say five movies of mine want to hire women directors. I mean, it happens to be true, and I congratulate them. And they're five. Who are they? Where do they come from? What's their background? I have two that want to hire women DPs. Try and find a database of any kind to talk about women DPs. So at the end of the day, you could have someone who's committed, and a lot of us, a lot of us guys are committed. Excuse me, sitting on my phone. Um, uh, a lot of guys like me want to involve a lot of women in, in, in films. Look at uh, Hidden Figures. Uh, it's a woman's story. And there are so many other projects that are, are women-centric, uh, that, that are good, that had a marketable. Kate, you're working on a doc that's about a woman. Uh, I mean, tell us about the doc. 
and uh, it's about uh, it's all, and then it's also more than a doc. We're turning it into a limited series. It's about Jane Scott, the world's first rock and roll critic in 1964. She was age 43 and wrote for the Cleveland Plain Dealer, and since then has interviewed oh went to attended over 10,000 concerts and interviewed everyone that you could possibly imagine in the history of rock and roll and became friends with many of them. She's just a respected glass ceiling breaker. I'm working currently on a film also on women's issues in the sense that it's the film on the first commercial pilot in South Africa, woman commercial pilot in the 70s and how she got there and how she became the first female uh, commercial pilot and the question she was asked before she could even get her job such as they did a survey to make sure that people would actually fly a plane with a woman at the helm so <laughs> that's what I'm working on I, right now. So, so our producer has given us the cut so uh, final comments Daniela a final comment I love this website. I have a, um, I'm developing a six to eight part mini series that need we really need the woman's sensibility as a director to make the the series come true. The series is being done in Brazil and it's been watched by a hundred million a hundred million times because it's done by hundred million people because it's done over and over. But it needs to travel, for this to travel around Europe and around the world. I am sure that it needs a woman's sensibility and it will travel. We are going to adapt. I just received the script the, the first hour. And, and I would love to have the website because <laughs> other, otherwise I'm relying on, as I, I, and they are great, talent agents from our background. They are going to bring, and I'm thinking of the, <laughs> the I think she's a president of here in Cannes. Um, Joan Camp Campion. Jane Campion. I think it, she, I, she would be wonderful. I'm kind of <laughs> we are going to take it to her, but but I'd like to see to see more and to have a, yes. a, a website that I can go and and see. That would be fantastic. Uh, Kate, okay. final comment. Um, should I just? There's a couple of different things. I think we're all saying the same thing: mm -hmm. is that we need to support each other in every which way we can, including funding. Um, lobbying, uh, lobbying Congress, yes. lobbying governments yes. to do 50-50 by 2020, um, support companies, well Canada just has all these amazing programs, yes. Germany, yes. Uh, Nor Norway, now we need it to be also in America and people like Ryan Murphy who are doing 50-50 by 2020 with their cast and crew are people, we need to support them and it's the power of the purse that's where we keep you know we want to see stories we want to tell them and they'll make money thank you uh, Naomi I really think that we are in 2017 and to be talking about gender when you're talking about talent is something that does not fit any language I think that we have to recognize the talent hire the people that will be able to do the best job independently of their gender and when you're working on a social issue or, or any story that you're bringing in, work with men and women and don't discourage any, anyone because of that. And of course women will have more chances when you are bringing them because of the talent, because women are very talented in many, <laughs> many areas. So um, I think that we've got to stop talking about the differences by gender and, and really discuss about what each one brings to the table and what each one can contribute to make a beautiful story and, and bring it to the world and make a difference. Final comment. <laughs> I just think that the more that it's bubbling up and people are discussing the ideas of what does that mean, such as the German uh, company who, who takes a script and lays it down and works with directors and producers to identify, can't we really make this a woman? Can't we make this a woman? Can't we do that? Can't we hire these things? And then the woman out of London who has a program on identifying with an F rating, uh, films that are made by a woman, that are directed by, that are written, that are acted with the principal character, and IMDb has gotten behind her to support that F rating. I mean, it's really important. And I think what you do, I know you love the idea of women reaching equality, and I, I appreciate Cork you giving us this platform. And she can tell you about yeah. the Canadian law. Uh, the final comment from you, Eileen. 
I just want to take one second because I really liked your comment on the uh, making a dinner and, and having everybody as a guest for the director. What we do for the DPs, the people who want to work with camera, the women who are perhaps scared by the equipment, we always used to say to them, have you ever used a sewing machine? A camera is super simple compared to a sewing machine. If you can use a sewing machine, you can set behind a camera. But it is a, a concerted effort and we have to work together and I hope that uh, people understand that this is something that is, is we have to bring the people to the table. And so your comment on the directory is really important because if they're not sitting at the table, they don't even get, get noticed. And so it's making sure that there are women at that table to be chosen for the director or to be chosen for the DP or to be chosen for the casting director because it is, it's a very important step and it's, it has to come out and come to the table. Uh, so I have a final comment. One, I'm very supportive. But when I'm supportive, but there's a sense we need to create parity. Right? And we all agree we need to create parity. But the example that I give, and it's not something that we can't work through, is let's say I have a movie and we've got the money, and I'm responsible for the money. I mean, I'm not responsible for getting it, but I have to say where it goes and how it goes, and I have to look for the, the investor's interest, because that's what I'm supposed to do. The, the producers put that responsibility in me. Now I come to the director, who I'm gonna pick, and I'm using just an extreme example, but it, 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 it tells a point. I want a woman, but the woman that that I find because I don't have your wonderful directory hasn't hasn't directed a movie in five years. She's she's good, but she and then I have a gentleman who won the Academy Award last year to direct a movie. It makes my job very difficult. As to what I'm going to do because I am responsible for the dollars. So I want, as my last comment, to say, let's hurry up. Let's hurry up and get things done to make my decisions a lot easier. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Corky. Thank you very much. Thank you, Corky. Okay. Thank you.